ultimate lecture of this sub course on uh, stochastic dynamics or stochastic processes and uh, we will uh, carry on with this development of uh, probabilistic uh, dynamics in the context of a continuum uh, description uh, which we started last time in terms of the Langevin equation. So, to start with I'll let me summarize what we discussed last time. So, what we did is uh, we wrote down an equation of motion for the particle. So, this is the Langevin equation. and the equation was very simple it was basically Newton's law with the mass divided out. So, d u by d t we wrote is a viscous term minus beta u coming. So, we, the scenario we were imagining is a small colloidal particle in a liquid and uh, it is uh, moving due to thermal agitation, but its movement is hampered by the viscosity of the liquid that is what we said. So, it is minus beta u, but because of the random impulses it receives uh, there are changes of momenta in a certain small time interval and that we said is this acceleration a of t these are random, but more to the point they are very quick. They happen so fast that in any sensible, sensible in the sense of able to sense that sort of sensible time scale, there will be many, many, many billions of these collisions uh, and we are interested in phenomena on the time scale on a time scale which may be small, but certainly not on the time scale of collisions. So, this is very very uh, rapid. So, this is what we said uh, rapidly varying force or rapidly varying acceleration and beta was uh, the beta that you get from Stokes law from So, beta in fact I did not write it down for a spherical particle Stokes has given us an expression for the you know drag on a particle of uh, size a could the battery be down no it is fine yeah ok um, and uh, so beta in terms of that is 6 pi eta a divided by m. Beta has units 1 over time and as we will see uh, inverse of beta 1 over beta will describe the time scale for approach to equilibrium ultimately. All right. Now, uh, what were the properties of a? We assume that a average is 0 and the I mean all our vectors I am not, not putting the sign dot a of t prime is because it is rapid and we are looking at these time scales which are you know rather, rather large these are uncorrelated this is a very very good approximation it is not a basically not an approximation, but of course it depends on the amplitude of the acceleration and that we parameterized by 2 times little q I think yeah. Okay. So, these two processes characterize the noise, noise meaning the noisy acceleration. What is the actual distribution of A? We have not specified it, we have just specified the variance at that moment, but it could be a Gaussian. You know, Gaussian is a good function, but any other function will do with a finite variance. And Gaussian, if it's Gaussian, we say we have what's the word? Gaussian noise. Hmm? It's white noise. It's also called Gaussian white noise. 
it is white because being uncorrelated in time if you look at the Fourier transform of the power spectrum it will be flat it will be independent of omega and the nomenclature white comes from a you know spectroscopy we have a lot of colors a lot of wavelengths but this has all wavelengths so it is white I mean all frequencies so it is white. Okay. So, so it is a white noise this is white noise and if it were is drawn from a Gaussian distribution fine it is a Gaussian, Gaussian white noise, but we need not assume that. Okay. So, the picture that goes with this of course, is that if you looked at the time axis we have this sort of very rapid variation you know and we are looking at uh, time scales even at dt's will have huge amount huge, huge number of these very rapid variations. Okay. So, this was the thing. Now, the fact is that we could solve this equation and the solution was simple linear first order equation and we found that u of t minus u naught of t times e to the minus beta t was given by an integral using an integrating factor e to the beta xi a of xi d xi. And then basically what we did is we used a lemma I am not going to rewrite it to find the distribution of u. Okay. So, let me write the distribution in this form. So, we are going to write two distributions one is the distribution of the velocity second of the displacement just to write it a little compactly and avoid repeating large expressions twice we will write it as w w is the probability density of having a speed u or the velocity u at time t given a velocity u naught at time t naught at time 0. Okay. So, this let me see in my compact more compact notation is 1 over 2 pi sigma squared of t. Okay. There was a time dependent variance. So, I am explicitly writing it down but I am putting a subscript u on it say reminding us this is a variance for the velocity distribution okay. and uh, this to the 3 by 2 e raised to minus u minus u naught e to the minus beta t squared divided by 2 sigma squared sigma sub u squared of t. Okay. I will write down the expression for sigma u in a minute, but let me write similarly w of r and t given that you started at point r naught with velocity u naught is equal to 1 over 2 pi <coughs> sigma sub r squared of t, we will write that down as well in a minute to the 3 by 2 e raise to minus and we have a bit of a mouthful here, but divided by 2 sigma sub r squared of t. What is this mouthful? Most terms will drop out as the time increases, but r minus r naught. Okay minus u naught 1 minus e to the minus beta t over beta. Okay, well, over beta I may as well write like this since I pushed it up square. So, both are Gaussian distributions they are shifted they shifted they shifted Gaussians, but they are both Gaussian 
and uh, we will write down the expressions for sigma u squared and sigma r squared below. This is I think a better way to write it than we did yesterday, but uh, it is equivalent. So, sigma sub u squared is equal to 1 minus e to the minus 2 beta t. Remember beta is not repeat not 1 over k t, beta is the inverse time. So, good beta t right inverse time 1 minus 2 beta t divided by nothing no divide ok with the q over beta. and sigma r squared if you do not mind I will write it right here. So, that it you know sigma r squared of t these are functions of t is equal to ok this is a bit longer uh, k times temperature. Now, I am actually I have done something here. In other words, I have from this is, uh, form we deduce sorry from this form we deduce a relation between q beta and temperature and we use that here. Okay, so, I will write that relation down, but uh, k t times 2 beta t minus 3 plus 4 e to the minus beta t plus oh, minus e to the minus 2 beta t. The point is the function is known and known explicitly and here it is m beta squared. Okay, so, this is a complete solution and whenever there is a complete solution of a problem it is worth writing it down although you may be interested in one limit or the other and of course, we are interested in the large time limit. So, these are actually telling you several things these uh, answers. The first thing is of course, the time scale that is brought in I mean th that was put in and appears as you know as importantly is 1 over beta. So, on times scale is much bigger than 1 by beta. Let us look at the first one this one or rather this one this drops out. So, we get sigma squared is q by beta we get that whole expression becomes q by beta and then we can compare with the expected. So, so what we would say is that on this time scale the system will equilibrate, but in equilibrium we recover the Maxwell distribution. So, therefore, we get a relation between uh, q by beta or if you like beta on the other side. Uh, so, uh, we go to equilibrium equilibrium what is the verb obtains is this a correct usage yes and we reach a Maxwell distribution and that then implies in matching to the matching our answer with this in this limit we get q is equal to beta k t over m. This is the first of three relations that I will put in a square. I think I said that this is a fluctuation dissipation relation, but it is not the fluctuation dissipation relation for this problem. I mean it relates the fluctuations at very tiny scales namely the acceleration scale q the amplitude of those to temperature uh, and importantly beta. Beta is a measure of the dissipation as we described because beta is an effect of viscous drag whenever there is a drag and the, the particle moves some uh, energy is lost irretrievably and that connect. Okay. 
So, if you like this connects the dissipation to the noise through the temperature. Q is the amplitude of the noise and becomes larger if you have a larger temperature which sort of makes physical sense and this is the way it is related. Okay, so, this is the first important physical deduction. Now, other thing let us just think for a minute. Um, okay, let us not think too much. Okay, so, it takes a time t of order 1 by beta to lose memory of the initial velocity. Okay, okay. All right. So, uh, this is a time taken to equilibrate you. I mean it is an exponential decay and this is the time relevant time. Okay. Now, uh, let us look at the this, um, uh, what do you call it sigma r squared of t. Okay, first thing is that on time scales larger than 1 by beta this drops out and this drops out even more. So, both these go away. We are left with 2 beta times time minus 3, but if time is quite large which we will assume it is we can even drop the 3. Okay. So, in that uh, uh, limit uh, what happens is some betas cancel out and so on, but the important thing is that sigma r squared grows like time reminds you of diffusion. Oh, you are going to change the battery, but the red light has not come on. So, maybe it is ok. Thank you. Huh. So, uh, this growth of in time of sigma r squared it by the way in contrast to the velocity, the velocity distribution did not grow in time it reached, reached a constant which was reassuring because Maxwell, the Maxwell distribution does not keep increasing in time it is sort of fixed. Right. So, it is nice I mean that all these things come out. Well, so then we can um, compare and we did uh, with a diffusive form. So, basically um, this reduced to m something something over 4. Okay. So, all right. So, again uh, um, what we will say is that the yeah. So, comparing W of R T, uh, what is the notation with e to the minus half, also sorry, sorry, uh, R minus R naught squared over 4 d T, that form with something. We see that D is related to our parameters through k t by m beta. So, this is the second relation that I will put up which I will put in a square. Okay. Um, okay. Let, let, let me leave it at that. Okay. See, see remember q just in brackets you can look at q. Uh, Okay, we'll we'll come back and look at all three relations a little together. Okay, so the mean squared displacement also you can work out, of course, and the mean squared displacement in any one direction, which is one third of r minus r naught squared, turns out to be two dt. 
which is if you substitute is k t over 3 pi eta a times t. Yeah, k is Boltzmann's constant. Sorry, k is Boltzmann's constant, and this is the relation that led Einstein to propose that to find k and thereby Avogadro's number. You can, you'll be able to do it if you track uh, uh, x minus x naught squares by doing lots of measurements on colloidal particles. Divide by t and deduce this coefficient. Okay, we will show a little later in the uh, uh, lecture today that d is related to the something called the mobility also. So, this is a third relation, but what is the mobility? The mo mobility is defined by saying that if you put on a force f on any particle, then it will pick up a speed speed because this is if you like in the the what regime uh, Aristotle in you know what is it called the overdamped regime overdamped regime or the, or the you know after the damping has had its not over damped but damped regime after you reach a terminal velocity and this is the definition of mobility that the velocity is mobility times force. So, the third relation will de derive I mean which is important these three are to be you know uh, look sort of uh, regarded as specially important because the simple general and important I mean the, is that the diffusion constant is proportional to mobility and the proportionality constant is k t. Okay. So, so, let us see what have what have we done. Now, diffusion just just think about it diffusion things diffuse they go here sometimes they go there sometimes they go there the fluctuations diffusion is a characterization of the fluctuations in the sense that mean squared displacements probability distributions which are not delta functions are all characteristics of fluctuations. So, therefore, this is relating fluctuations to response because this is the response to a force how does the particle pick up a velocity force is applied from outside. Okay. So, this is a response coefficient if you like. So, this relation relates fluctuations to response response understand what response means I am not writing it tells you how the system responds to an external field. This is perhaps one of the simplest scenarios of such a thing, but of course, you have response functions for anything and everything. If you apply an electric field and you ask for the current, well the fact that there is a current you know is a, you know the, the is a response to the electric field and the thing that multiplies it let us say the conductivity is a response function or response object or response something. Likewise, here. So, the fact that there is a relation between fluctuations and response is a very general thing, and uh, you will encounter this sometime in your lives, but not here. I mean, generalizations of this. What about this? This is beta, this is d, d characterizes fluctuations, this the dissipation. So, this connects fluctuations to dissipation also a very general relation you know. So, you will when you learn response theory as a separate large important uh, chapter in some book you will encounter all these things more or less in the same chapter. What about this? This one is really relating the microscopic parameter q to the microscopic parameter beta. So, it is not talking about macroscopic fluctuations or macroscopic dissipation or macroscopic response. 
it has a slightly different footing. It is just saying the parameters that you chose beta and q have to be related in this way in order to describe an equilibrium system described by Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Okay. So, it is a slightly different footing for that, but please understand these three and remember them. This one is called the Einstein relation. We have not yet shown it, we will show it in the course of the lecture today. So, good. So, I have completed one third of the lecture in one third of the time. How do I know it is one third of the lecture? Because I have three pages. <laughs> okay. So, I am now going to turn this this way. We we'll now come to the second one. Okay, shall we begin? Right. Now, today I am going to take up a slightly different approach to the problem of something moving randomly, uh, perhaps in a potential, perhaps not, we will see, but we will do it in a slightly general way. And you remember when we talked about the random walk, we said that we can approach the problem in two ways. One is we follow the histories and we see what we get and we work out the distributions that result from many histories. Analogously, this is the development we followed here, but in the random walk problem, we also said that okay, if we do not want to do that, we can also look directly at the probability distribution and see how it evolves and let it evolve and let it do this and that and write an equation for that, which was the diffusion equation generalized to also to the diffusion drift equation and uh, we were happy with that, but there was an equation of motion written for the probability density. So, let us do the same here. Let us write an equation for probability density. We will do it in a slightly general setting. We will not say whether we are talking about displacement or velocity or anything. We will talk about a variable y. And the equation we write down is the Fokker Planck equation. It has a name. See, everything has a name. Uh, Actually, I am not very sure of the nomenclature always, but uh, uh, I think the some of you have read Chandrasekhar's article very recently and will correct me if I go wrong. Okay. Yes, I mean uh, uh, I am going to call this for Fokker Planck equation. The actual Fokker Planck equation may be a little, I, I, I do not know, slightly different, but this is in the spirit of Fokker Planck, Fokker and Planck. All right. Okay, so, we are going to talk about, uh, uh, okay, let me write down the answer, let me write down the equation we are going to get. Okay, so, you are clear where we are going. So, we will write it for a, an object y, like could be one of these r's or v's or something, but we will write the equation in such a way that you know by taking special cases of the equation we recover that and then we take another special case we recover that and you know it says uh, you recover something else also. So, it is a slightly general form. So, the most important thing is that you should know the equation and understand it and uh, be comfortable with it d p by d t. So, here is the equation d p by d t is equal to minus d by d y of some function a of y. This is a little abstract I believe, I mean I admit once we put it in something we will we'll get it plus half d 2 d y squared some other function of y b of y times p. p is a function of y and t, maybe I should emphasize that. The probability distribution of the parameter random variable y as a function of time, this is the form it will have. a of y and b of y 
will depend on the physics of your process. It's a random process, but what is it doing? So, T of y and T of y don't have any explicit time dependence. Yes, they don't have any explicit time dependence. Yes. We will show in particular instances how we can deduce A and, a and B and the sort of simple things, but it, it's nice to have a general form. And the reference for this may be Riskin. There's a book by a person called Riskin. R I S K E N, or perhaps Chandrasekhar's article itself, but uh, ha actually I have not followed Chandrasekhar for this part. What are A and B? Okay, P, P, all right. So, Y is the random variable. You can think, let us say, let us think in terms of the random walk, Y would be like a displacement or in this problem it could be the velocity. We do not know. It could be, we are writing it in generally, but it is the random variable. <coughs> p of y and t is the normal p of y and t, probability distribution. And you will agree that we are writing an equation of motion for the probability of di distribution d p by d t. A of y and B of y are functions uh, determined from, let me just write it, physics of the process, physics of what we are trying to model. You may even go back, if you like, when to, uh, for this physics of the process to the Langevin equation and just look at it and see what it is saying for various things and put back y, b of y. Or in some other way, I mean, you can even choose to model your system by putting in functions a of y and b of y. Each will define a different model. Okay. So, so it is of that sort. We have not said what a and b are. But they actually involve, so what they involve is that if p changes, I mean sorry, p, uh, yeah, so if the small time delta t passes, okay, p will evolve, all right. So, let us say, say it goes from a value, uh, okay, no, no, not value, but uh, okay, uh, there is a problem, so let us say there is a transition probability to go from uh, value y to a value z okay, in some time, a and b will be related to how that happens quite quickly in a small time t. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, should or be because no, I think you may not. This is the in the form of a continuity equation. So it's d by dy. So I should be able to write it like some well, you can immediately. So it's d by dy oh, yeah, yeah. of a of y times p plus one half d by d y of b of y times p, which is a current. I mean, it, I mean it is not the first current you might write down, but it is certainly of the form of a current. Vaguely speaking without defining the variable y, we would say this is like, uh, you know something like velocity. I mean, how should we say it? Uh, hmm? Yeah, dimensions of A will be, uh, they will be velocity actually, that is right, good. That is very, thank you. That's, you should quickly start teaching, this is the way to answer, dimensions, right. So, dimensions of A are indeed velocity, 
So, velocity times probability density will give you a current. So, this is one sort of current. This will have something like a diffusion constant, it will be something like a diffusion constant. So, this is a diffusive contribution to the current. Whenever you have diffusion, you know one way to think about it is spreading out, but the why is the diff what is the definition of diffusion constant? Well, the definition of diffusion constant itself is that if you have a gradient of density, there is a current which goes to. So, what, what I am trying to say is that the this is a side thing J diffusive is equal to minus a current. So, let me put it as d p by d y in for instance times a constant which is in fact the diffusion constant. This is known as Fick's law. Okay. And it is saying that if you have a gradient of density all right. So, I mean I am just repeating. So, suppose the density is like this you have a bump like this. So, what will happen on this side? Uh, p is increasing d p by d y is positive. So, if it is positive there is a current backward, if it is negative the current is forward, but you see current means particles will go this way or that way and effect will be to reduce the bump. So, you know. So, in order to avoid gradients, the systems have a tendency to go back to a uniform density state. You might ask why? Why do they have this tendency? Well, the answer is at least partly and sometimes largely entropy. Because I am assuming this is on a sort of large scale. So, compare this profile of density with something that is more or less uniform. It is easy to convince yourself that a macroscopic constraint of unequal density will result in a lower entropy than uniform. Please do it as an exercise and in order to do it do not look at a big fat bump like that just take two things and show that the entropy here is larger. So, all systems have been. So, I am assuming there are no inter interactions between particles when I am writing this even if there are no interactions between particles or you know in that case at least this is true. Okay. It is true whether you have I non interacting particles, it is true also if you have hardcore interactions between particles, and you can work these things out. So, to recap, the diffusion constant is also, uh, as we see from here, a response function of some sort. So, it is not so surprising it is connected to mobility after all. Now, we took a sort of roundabout uh, something to explain what this term B might be. I, I think we started there. Okay, we are back now. All right, so let us uh, go. So, now, uh, so there are two things we, we would like to do in the remaining part of this lecture. One is to derive this equation, two, to apply this equation. And three, part three is part of part two. We'll look at implications actually for the current, and especially the current in a steady state. And we'll see that there's much physics to be drawn from there, and the Einstein relation will come out in that way. Ah, we all started because you asked: Is is this P? Uh, you know, conserved. I, you put it in some other form, but the moment you have a continuity equation, you know that the object that you are dealing with is conserved. 
In fact, the way you write the continuity equation is to start by saying, if something is conserved, then whatever comes in will increase the pro p in some way, and whatever. So, so that that's the source of the continuity equation, which I remind you is the equation. d p by d t plus d j by d x in one dimension or, or otherwise del dot j equals 0. Very basic, very fundamental equation, a kinematic equation independent of dynamics has to hold if something is conserved. In our case, what is conserved if you like is probability. What does it mean probability is conserved? It means the following that probability is something that we are spreading out over this option, that option, that option, etcetera, but all the time sum over p is 1. It is in the nature of probability to be conserved. What is uh, some other conserved quantity can somebody think of? Charge, okay, charge, okay, fine or even plane density you know I mean so plane de density is conserved uh, and therefore you could write this in terms of density you could write a similar thing for charge you know the current will when you when you're t talking about charge it will be an electric current normal current current the, okay the sort that flows through the wires but uh, if you're talking about other things you have currents of other sorts like you could have a probability current you know so of from these options or uh, you know the probability is going out or in or going in this way so we build a sense of probability and it's changing in time and this is what is happening okay good so that was a very uh, important question and it will actually pertain to what we do a little later Thank you. Okay. So, now let us turn to the derivation of the equation. The derivation is a slightly formal thing, something that I also did not know till um, some years back, I mean some being um, of the order of maybe 8 or 9 or 10, something like that. But now that I know it, I will share it. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, so just the applications are also very interesting. So let let's uh, see the derivation of this. See, like all derivations, it's not very long. It's about six lines long, maybe. So do do don't uh, you know despair. It will be over by the time we reach here. These are six well thought out lines. So pay attention to each. One of the lines has been contributed to by Chapman and Kolmogorov. Good, because it's probably correct then. <laughs> you know. so let me emphasize: you've encountered Kol Kolmogorov's name in the context tw twice. One. Oh. You have encountered it once in the context of the CAM. Stands, M stands for Moser, A stands for Arnold, and K stands for Good. Well done. Second time you encountered Kolmogorov's name is when we went on the excursion. We passed a venerable institute of the city called the Indian Statistical Institute, and we were told that he was a frequent visitor there and he was and there is a famous photo, well I do not know how famous, which is available on the SNBOS center website where SNBOS is accompanying Kolmogorov, Kolmogorov is about that tall, SNBOS is about <laughs> this tall, <laughs> they are walking together and they are followed by an even taller person, Mahalanobis extremely tall and it is a very nice photo. At least to compare the heights and you know 
<laughs> sorry, but uh, that's the first time I actually saw a photo of Kolmogorov. Now, Kolmogorov did many things. I mean, see, if you go to various conferences in India, each subfield thinks Kolmogorov is ours. Classical mechanics thinks Kolmogorov is theirs. Good. Tick. Fluid mechanics thinks Kolmogorov is theirs. Turbulence, the whole, the first scaling theory of turbulence proposed by Kolmogorov. And probability theory thinks Kolmogorov is theirs. Well, one thing is beyond doubt is that he built a school of probability in the Soviet Union, which till today is a powerful school. Many people from that school have uh, sort of contributed. We do not encounter the names that much perhaps, because many things done in the Soviet Union are also done usually a little later in the West and somehow, I do not know, for some reason we are not aware of that. Klyatskin, was he associated with Kolmogorov? That we do not know, but certainly influenced, I mean, by, so, you know, uh, etc., etc. So, there are many. Uh, but Russians, you remember the first sentence I read from the preface of Feller, that outside the Soviet Union, probability theory is not regarded as a respectable part of mathematics. By implication, in the Soviet Union, it is. And that is largely thanks to him. Okay. This is all. Uh, Mm, we're taking away valuable time from the lecture. Okay, fine. All right. So what we do is we consider the following. We consider a transition from. Okay. So P Z Y. Let me write it. P Z Y delta T transition probability. for the transition to move from y to z in time delta t. Is the definition clear? Yeah. Let us define a sequence of moments a n. Okay, let, let me not call it n, let me do it one by one a 1. Okay, well, let us define it once and then we will write down a 1 etcetera. Let us define a n as an integral of d y okay, of z minus y to the n times the, this probability that we had transition probability oops z y delta t. See the thing is in time delta t you are not sure where you can where you will land you may land up this way, that way, etcetera. It will be they will be close to z. So, therefore, y minus z is a measure of how, how much you are away. So, y, you ask for the moment, you know. As we have seen, second moments are very useful because they characterize many things. Okay. So, then in this spirit, okay, so we have defined it. We do not have to keep redefining it. Good. I mean, you can write down a 1, a 2, a 3. Okay we will consider situations. So, this is a restriction if you like, but it, it is widely applicable. So, consider situations in which a 1 uh, of z and t. See, once we have done that average over y, you know, there is no y dependence. It depends, may depend on z. Okay, so this is proportional. We will insist to delta t. Okay, so we will. A, okay, so a one is proportional to delta t. Semicolon. A two is proportional to delta t. A three, four, five, etcetera, all go like delta t to some higher power, power higher than 1.
not a very outrageous assumption because if you think about central limit theorem all that mattered there was a second moment once that existed the value of the third fourth fifth did not matter in that context. Similarly, we are saying in some way the central limit theorem like ideas are applying and as delta t goes to 0 here you know this goes to 0 faster than delta t. So, since the proportional to delta t and delta t is a variable we divide out delta t and call that thing capital A and capital B. So, capital A of y is limit as delta t goes to 0 of a 1 ok of y ok since I use z let me use z there only a of z yeah yellow chalk is everybody's favorite it is over yeah I have this little bit let us see a a 1 is uh, a 1 of z and t divided by delta t a of z b of z. So, these are the proportional constants which tell you how a 1 and a 2 grow. Ah, delta t sorry in fact, let us not uh, yeah a 1 of z and delta t correct thank you. Beg your pardon? Yes, yes, transition probability can depend on z, z or y or whatever, they are close by, yes. Okay. So, this is what it is. Okay. So, this is definition of A and B. Now, so now comes the proof, these were definitions. So, where shall I write the proof? Now, Okay, I think we, we have to move here. Yeah. Okay, so here goes. Consider it's a okay. Fine. Consider an integral which is i equal to an integral over d y 2 let me call it r of y 2 d by d t of p y 2 given y 1 at time given y um, 1 and the time interval t that has passed. So, starting at y 1 you go to y 2 okay, in time t with a certain probability p which certainly depends on time. What is r? r is any function. So, that sh you should be happy, but it is a very well behaved function which goes to 0 as you go far away. <laughs> its role in this proof is to act like a dummy. Why? Because there will be certain derivatives we will get and we will transfer them to r and from r and so on and r will just stay eventually it will drop out of the whole thing. It will stay it will actually stay till the end, but then it would not figure in the answer. r is a well behaved function. well behavior will mean that r of y will go to 0 as y goes to plus or minus infinity. So, it is well behaved it is sort of. So, bound it is role will be operational role will be that the boundary terms when you integrate by paths will go to 0. Capital what? Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, limit is there. Should be there. Right. So, let us go now. 
but in the nature of derivatives we can write this as the difference of two terms. So, what we will do is we will talk about the difference between two p s and divide by delta t. You, you understand what I am saying r of y 2 p of y 2 uh, y 1 at t plus delta t okay, minus p of y 2 at y and t hmm? derivative. At this point, for this term, we will use what is called the Chapman Kolmogorov equation. So, I have to tell you what it is. It is a very commonsensical and very nice simple equation. Oh, thank you, that is really nice. Let me just pause them out. Okay, thank you. Yellow. I mean, I have never seen such prompt alert assistance. Very good. Fine. So, here we will use the Chapman Kolmogorov equation, but then of course, you should know what it is. And the Ch Chapman Kolmogorov equation I will write here on this side, and uh, its use and it um, also transcends just this one application. So, it is a very worthwhile and simple equation to know, it is useful, you know. So, what is the equation? So, it is like this. So, suppose you are starting from some point y 1, okay, this is y 1 axis and oh sorry y axis or something y is horizontal sorry it is the y axis, okay. but uh, here is the point y 1, here is time you want to reach point y 2 let us say suppose and y 2 is there how can you do it? Well, it is a random process that we are talking about. So, let us draw a possible path here it is. Let us draw another possible path there it is. We will draw as many paths as there are colors of chalk. It is a good thing it is bounded. Yeah. Uh -huh. Last. So, there are many, many ways of going from y 1 to y 2. Kolmogorov and Chapman acknowledge that and they say let us, this was uh, in time t, hmm. so yeah. I, okay, I, I, ho I hope this is exactly right. I'm, I'm, okay, so this was this is the time axis, and this is time t here, right? In time t, you are supposed to go from y one to y two, but what you do is you pause in between at some other time. Pause that time t one. Oh, t no, no, t one has already come in. No, t one has not, right? Y one has come in. T one is a new time. Good, t one. So, you are going from 0 to t, but in order to go from 0 to t, you must pass through t 1, because t 1 is between 0 and t. You will agree, time is flowing, so you choose an in between time. That in between time, you might have been here, 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 but you have to reach y 2. So, you must go from this y to that y 2, and from this to that, from this to that, like that. So, the Chapman Kolmogorov equation is just putting in words this thought, that is all. So, what it is saying is that the probability to go from this one that we had there, something similar to that, is equal to the only thing is y could be many things, so you integrate over all possibilities <coughs> dy p of y2 starting from y, okay, this is the second part of the path in time, okay, sorry I knew I had messed it up. So, this is not time t 1, this is t minus t 1, 
this is time t1. This is time t minus t1. Okay. So, p of y 2 in this way multiplied by I will write it here p of you have to go from y 1 to y. Okay. So, y will be the end point y 1 and in time t minus t 1 that is all. So, it is one of these nice commonsensical equations that you anybody and everybody could have written but not anybody and everybody wrote them. Chapman and Kolmogorov wrote them and it is very useful. Why? Because we can now use Chapman Kolmogorov. So, please forgive the you know interchange of what is the dependent and independent variable y to y that, that much you have to sort of uh, think through yourselves. Yes you can say for so we will be taking the limit I am not writing it but but, but you should yeah we are changing the so it, it is indeed what you are saying is right okay so we can, we can even write it good now use chapman kolmogorov by putting the following okay so let us just do it. let me just write it i think no point uh, speaking and speaking and speaking. This is equal to limit delta t going to 0, 1 over delta t integral d y 2 r y 2 comes along for the ride and we are left with well we are not left with we also have an integral over a sub new y set of y's d y which were these y's right. So, we are going to put that in of r y 2 is there then p of y 2 y delta t. So, you t plus delta t you break up into t and then delta t. So, this delta 